Hey guys, what's going on? So today we're gonna talk about this little feller, the Glock 23, and why I believe it might just possibly be the best Glock ever built. Let's talk about it. Okay, so let's just get all this stuff out of the way real quick. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say some things in this video that like, like it's the best Glock ever built and it's truly and purely just to irritate people. I'll be completely honest about that. Um, I'm gonna express my opinions and views on the Glock for uh, 48. Did I say 48? The Glock 23, I think I did say Glock 48. I do like the Glock 48 sitting right over there. But the Glock 23, I'm gonna express my opinions about this and about Glock and everything else and all these, a bunch of different things. They're purely my opinions, okay? So take it or leave it. Please do discuss about it. If you don't agree with me, I'd love to sit here and chat about it with you in the comments and let everybody else see your points of views, okay? But let's talk about it, okay? Let's 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 go over, um, well, I don't even know how to start this whole thing. Let's start out when I got this gun. I got this, I believe it was this gun, whenever I graduated from the police academy, I believe. My wife let me go out and get it. I think that's when I got it, was this gun. And I, at the time, I was a big Glock, um, a Glock 40 guy, right? I loved Glock 40s, um, the 27s. I had one of those. I think that's the first, mm, no, I bought a Glock 22. That was the first Glock that I ever bought. So the full size, the big one, um, the Glock 22. And then in college, the first concealed carry pistol that I really got, that was a Glock 27, okay? And I did love that gun to pieces, carried it all the time. Uh, mostly I had it on a shoulder rig, uh, like a Galco shoulder rig. And then a Galco ankle glove. Absolutely love that wart until it completely fell apart. I need to get another one. Um, long story short, like I've been a 40 guy for a very, very long time. Um, back whenever, it wasn't even that long ago, but I mean, you could look up some stuff on the internet. You could read the, the articles and different things. And there were plenty of articles at the time. And I would look at the magazines, right? I didn't even have a phone at the time, like a smartphone kind of thing. Like it took me a while to get that kind of stuff. Um, I was just slow coming to the game. But that all that being said, I wasn't so caught up in all the hype, right? I kind of tried to do a little bit of my own research and I really thought at the time that the 40 Smith & Wesson, this little guy right here, was like the end all, be all, best cartridge out there, okay? And so that's whenever I think, I think that's why I got the Glock 22 beginning with, right? I, I started out with that one and I loved it and I shot it and at the time, ammo was about, I mean, about the same, probably pretty much cost-wise. I don't, I don't remember exactly. At the time, I didn't buy bulk. I just buy a box here, buy a box there, and kind of stuff. Um, but I thought it was amazing. I thought it was really good. It was like it has this. Has, it's faster than a forty-five. Or how, how does that go? There's a certain way you're supposed to say it. I don't even remember anymore. You can tell I jumped off the bandwagon a while back ago. But it, it is. It's a fast bullet, so it's like a nine millimeter where it's fast, right? It's a little bit. No, 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 no. It's heavier than a nine millimeter. See, it's been a while. I'm, I'm not as tuned up on all this. Uh, on all the the uh, cultish rigmarole, right? It's heavier than a nine millimeter, right? Because these are 180 grains. Yep, heavier than a nine millimeter, but it's faster than a 45. So you get the best of both worlds, and it it comes out to this like magic bullet, right? Okay. Um, nowadays, looking back on it, I can see some things about that. Yes, it is. It is a a little bit heavier hitting than a nine millimeter. You can hold the nine millimeter and the 40 up next to each other, you know, next to each other. And you can see, obviously, this 40 is bigger, right? And I don't remember chrono wise, like what the feet per second is and stuff, but it all depends on how you load it. You can load the things, these to shoot faster than nine and nine to shoot faster than 40. But when you get into hand loading, you throw your variables, like those all go out the window because you can do pretty much whatever you want to a degree with a grain of salt. Um, but that's not why I'm saying that this is the best Glock out there, okay? Because I do agree, some things I agree, some things I think are a little dogmatic, and I think some people say things on the internet just to get a rise out of people, but I do agree with James Yeager that the 40 in the 19 size, in the small frame, I guess it'd be a medium frame or whatever, because they have the large frame, now they have the, the slim frames, so it's not a slim frame, the small frame, right? And a small frame Glock, it is a little much, right? It, it, it packs a wallop, and I don't know the technical specs or whatever stress levels that these things get to 
or whatever the technical term is, but I do know that I had a cat, I think you'd call it a catastrophic failure. Thankfully, during a, um, a qualification round, shooting uh, round, when I was in the sheriff's office, right? I had my Glock 27, little pocket rocket, right? And I was requalifying with that gun and it fired and I went to go fire the next round and it just, it didn't work. And so I'm looking at it and it's kind of in this half thing like this. It's like half cocked, not quite all the way back, not all the way forward. Long story short, it literally it just destroyed the entire um, uh, recoil, um, the spring system, the recoil spring, right? It destroyed it. It, it, it busted it, cracked it, smacked, like it, it was dead. It was completely dead. So I do, and that, that was with stock stuff, right? I, that was a secondhand Glock that I got, the 27. I didn't buy it new, so it was secondhand. I don't know how many rounds I had before, but it was in very good condition, right? It was very, it wasn't like a beat up gun. It's not like, it's not like somebody like me nowadays with guns that I treat like tools sold it to somebody else. No, this was a, this was a very well taken care of gun. So it wasn't like at the end of its lifespan. Don't get me wrong. Okay, it had plenty of life left in it, but the fact that the 40, it is a high pressure round and it beats the living snot out of the gun and out of the shooter. I mean, you gotta hold on to it and stuff. It's not that bad, whatever, but it does beat the guns to death. And I, and, and I know personally from, from doing that, like that was my carry gun, that was my backup gun as a cop. I'm glad it happened on the range and not when I actually needed it because it literally blew the spring up. It just destroyed that whole thing and it was so locked up I had to take, go off range, go you know to the armor basically, and get the thing taken apart because it was a it was a paperweight at that time. You couldn't there was no clearance drill that you could do. It was completely seized up. So I'm not saying necessarily that the 40 itself is the best cartridge out there. It has its place. It does its thing. Obviously, like this was done by a 40. This was done by these 40s. Whatever it went. Um, this stuff. Right here, these things, I can personally attest, the, this ammunition, 180 grain, Fort Smith & Wesson HSTs, these things do work, right? They do business very, very, very well. So I will say, if you're gonna carry this gun, like yes, the, the cartridge will work, it will do its job. You carry, what, 15 rounds, or is it 14, 13 rounds, in a regular flush fit magazine, right? 13 rounds, so you're not getting quite the capacity out of a well, this is a mag pool, but a, a nine millimeter where you get 15 rounds, not quite getting the capacity, but you are getting a different style bullet. Okay. Now I'm going to speak out of, um, what would you call? It's not personal experience, but from again, things that I've read, things that I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, go ahead. That's perfectly fine. And I'm going to get into a little bit of stuff here. So I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where we go with this. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to speak a little bit, not out of personal experience, but out of things that I have read, okay? I've never had to shoot a bear. I've never had to shoot a large animal, right? Not a deer, but like a dangerous animal, right? Four-legged or two-legged or any other, you know, any other combination of those. Um, but I have read and I understand, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that if you get, like, uh, I think it's buffalo boars or some kind of full metal jacket or hard cast um, lead bullet, those are good or better for taking down those large game because you need that penetration. A big old stinking brown bear or a big old stinking moose, you can't be shooting those things from what I understand with those federal HSTs because that federal HST or any other hollow point is going to hit that big animal. It's going to do what it's, excuse me, it's going to do what it's supposed to do, expand, and that's going to be all caught up in the muscle mass. Those things are huge. Like, believe me or not, those things, those animals are big and you need something to drill through all that fat and all through all that muscle and into the vitals and stop the thing, right? Or break a bone or do something to make it decide it doesn't want to hurt you at that time. It wants to go away. Um, so having something that is heavier, so it carries its mass a little bit better than a nine millimeter, such as these things, 180 grain or 200 grain. I don't know if they have 220s or not, but like the 200 grain, the, the heavier rounds that are hard cast, right? They're gonna hold themselves together. They're not gonna expand and have more oomph. They have more speed. So you can shoot it faster than a nine millimeter. If you get like the plus P's or the plus P plus, if you dare to do that in a Glock, um, they have the potential that I have read and understand to be a good defensive weapon against those animals, right? Against those things that you need that extra, extra penetration and you need that mass, right? 
a larger bullet to carry that weight through, okay? That's regurgitation of information that, that's an interesting term, regurgitation of information that I have read that I've come across, so you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I've read and listened and watched enough articles and videos and, and heard people talk about it that that's my understanding of it. So that's why I would say, that's one reason I would say the 40 is still viable. I mean, it's still out there. You can still get it, right? Even, even now, you can go out, you can find it. Like right now, it's hard to find most anything. But it's still out there. It's, it's, it's nicer to be able to have options and have options in the same gun, which brings us to the fact that not only that, that's, that's what talking about 40, right? So we're talking about 40, but that's why I'm saying the Glock 23. And I didn't say the 40 was the best gun. I said the Glock 23, in my opinion, is one of the best guns. Why? Well, let's say, let's put the caveat out there that you buy it new, which I did buy this gun new. Okay. So if you buy it new, then you're not in the same boat that I was not knowing how many rounds or whatever that 27 that blew up, how many rounds it had. So you know how many rounds this, you know, how, how many high pressure rounds if this has had plus P plus 40, whatever voodoo bullet shot through it, you know it's been shot through this gun. So the benefit, the major benefit that I see to, the, to this gun, to the 23, is that, I can get it apart. Well, I gotta drop the thingy. major benefit of having the 23 is that it is compatible and now this guy's all locked up on here it is compatible with nine millimeter conversion barrels okay this is basically you take a 19 this gun you take a 19 this is a 19 right technically technically no technically this is a 23 because that's how it was that's how it came that's what it serialized as all that stuff but it's the exact same thing from what i'm understanding i believe it's the ejector right? That is just slightly different. Just slightly different, right? They have a different number on it. Could be wrong on that too, but that's my understanding because you have the, the case, these, the, the backs of the, of the cartridges, right? 40 is obviously bigger. The nine millimeters are obviously smaller. They're going to be placed in a different location, but you can use one for the other. And I have case in point, I don't really shoot 40 out of this gun very much because all you gotta do is take out the barrel and I got a different spring just to make sure for sure that everything was running properly because it is marked different. So I don't know what the spring weight is for a 40 versus a nine, but I do know that you can take yourself a nice uh, 40 barrel. This is a 40 Smith & Wesson barrel. I don't know if it says on here. Yeah, it does, bar stall, 40 Smith & Wesson barrel. Take it and it will fit right in here and it will cycle and it will shoot and it will do exactly what it needs to do. And then you can take yourself a nine millimeter conversion barrel, right? So it's a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier, a little bit thicker than your standard nine, uh, nine barrel. And it fits in there and it cycles and it functions just fine. I have used this gun for personal protection. I have not ever had to use it on anything. I, I trust it, I use it because I've shot literally thousands of rounds through this gun. And it, I'm all I'm going to say about the reliability is Glock reliability is boringly reliable. It does what it needs to do unless you feed it some kind of funky ammunition, right? Um, and I have used this particular gun and this setup with the 9mm conversion barrel in it and all that at Tactical Games twice, right? And it's worked perfectly fine for me there. I don't think I had any issues there. I don't think. I really don't think so. I, I really don't. Um, but it, it, it works. And the fact that you can switch out your calibers, you're basically getting, the whole point I'm trying to get at is you're, you're basically getting more than two guns because you can also do 357 SIG, which I had one of those barrels for my uh, for my 27. And it'd be nice to, to have one for this gun just for the fact that if you ever ran across 357 SIG and you didn't have anything else, you could still use it. That would be nice, but I don't. I, I'm not. A, I don't know a whole lot about the 357 Sig. I don't subscribe to that whole thing. I stick with 40 or nine, and I really stick with nine. I don't really even shoot 40. I've had this ammunition in this box for like years, and I don't really use it. All right, so let's shoot it real quick. Enough of me yibber yabbering about whatever I'm talking about, because I end up going on rabbit trails and I forget what I'm talking about. Uh, but let's shoot this. We'll shoot. This is a Barstow 40 Smith & Wesson barrel, right? This is somebody else's barrel. They've been loaning it to me for a very long time. Thank you, Ben. Um, and I'm going to get it back to them, but I would need to wrap up this review on this barrel. And I figured this would be a perfect time to do this. So let's, let's shoot this guy real quick. We'll shoot the nine, shoot the 40. Um, we're at like seven yard. Look, we're over here. See the new little, we got some new targets. Thanks to Mr. Rob, who's not a ranger. Um, we'll do these, this little, the little, 
whatever it's called, the horse looking thing with the two, good grief, I can't even speak. I'll shoot at him, you'll see him move. How about that? All right, we're going to shoot the large target, not the little swinger guys, whatever, but the large target, there's like two hits. There's one hit on the neck, one hit by the belly button. I'm just gonna kind of aim at the hit, right at the belly button line, and we'll try to get a 10 shot group. It's just kind of shooting kind of erratic, and I don't know if that's ammo. Kind of being weird, so uh, I am gonna go from a somewhat supported position to try to make sure it's not me doing something stupid. All right, here we go. Well, I'm obviously doing something wrong. You can see my 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 shots are really terrible right now. But whatever, excuses, excuses. Let's throw the 40 barrel in there. See if we can do any better. All right, so we're gonna shoot right around mid chest, kind of right where the sternum should be. Well, I don't know if you can see that very well or not, but the 40 shot way better than the nine, which doesn't make any sense. I don't know if I'm just super flinchy today or if I'm doing something crazy, but uh, that's kind of that's kind of strange. I have shot the uh, this nine millimeter barrel a lot. I'm gonna shoot a different kind of ammunition. It might be the ammunition, probably not. Everybody blames other things. I'm gonna shoot the, the nine real quick one more time and see if it's just the ammunition. But I gotta tell you, like that's a fist sized group with this and this is also like a like a match grade barrel so like something to be said about that for the 40. I'm gonna shoot that nine one more time one more time. All right I've also got this lone wolf barrel this is a nine millimeter conversion barrel so I'm gonna run that in here maybe it's the other barrel this is also lone wolf but it's black non-marked um, but it's also a lone wolf barrel I believe unless I'm wrong about that I've been wrong about some crazy things before you know you can ask my friends, I'm not always right. Okay, but this is a nine millimeter barrel. These are 147 grain subsonic rounds. I'm gonna try to shoot them. I'm gonna aim for the head, which doesn't give me much margin of error if I start missing. I don't know where I'm missing at. 10 rounds, just like last time. So the battery died back there right around the uh, six or seven round mark. But this this is our first group with the with that black barrel. I think it's a, I believe it's a uh, lone wolf barrel. But we got like, I can't, I'm not gonna really, really be able to count them, but it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I might have pulled one. So most of these are down here. Some of them are up here. That's not a good group, really, whatever. This is the 40, this is all I mean, except for this one guy down here, they're all like within a fist size, pretty much. And then this was with the other lone wolf barrel. Um, I know I had one zip right over, knocked off some of this mohawk thingy here, but it's about, it's a little bit worse than this, which doesn't make any sense because it's nine millimeter. And uh, that was from before. It's nine millimeter and it should be super soft to shoot. So let's go back here. Let's wrap up this whole thing one more time. Promise to keep it short and sweet. Let's do it. Alrighty, guys. So in all honesty, best gun, worst gun, um, 
40 Smith & Wesson 9mm. That really wasn't what it was about, 40 Smith & Wesson 9mm. It was basically saying the Glock 23, in my opinion, still, no matter how I'm shooting, that really, really didn't prove anything except that I can't shoot. We all already know that. Um, but the 23, the Glock 23, if, you're, if you don't have a Glock yet, right, you're looking to go get a gun, and you're thinking, okay, 40's good, 9's good, I could get a 45, you know, Glock is weird, you could get a Glock 45, which is actually a 9mm. So you're trying to figure out what you want to get. If you have the budget um, to get a Glock anyway, about 500 bucks, 600 bucks, depending on where, you know, brand new, used, what kind of sales and things are going on, with availability, yeah. Um, I would seriously consider, if it was me doing this all over again, right, instead of going back and getting the Glock 22 and all that other kind of stuff, I would seriously consider getting a Glock 23. The main reason being, if you get it new, right, then you know what's going, what's, what will be shot through the gun. You're not going to have any issues like that, okay? Um, but the fact that you can change barrels... You basically gives you two different guns. I don't have. I have stock Glock 19s, right? I believe I do. Kind of. It's put. It's pieced together, so it's kind of like a stock Glock 19. Um, I have the War Poet, right? All that kind of stuff. I have stock 19 size guns, and, or style guns. And reliability-wise, this guy works the exact same. It's boringly reliable. Sometimes you'll have some malfunctions and stuff just like I will on any high dollar fancy gun out there, okay? If anybody has a gun and they say they've run a bajillion rounds through it and it never malfunctioned, well, they probably always clean it, which I don't know, I barely clean these guns, so that's part of the problem. Or really, maybe they just haven't actually shot that many rounds. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they have, maybe they have the one gun that just doesn't jam. I don't know. I have guns that jam because probably I don't clean them as well. But what I'm trying to get at is the versatility of the Glock 23. The fact that with the 23, you can use, is this, an, this is a 40, so you can use t Glock 22 magazines, right? So the longer magazine that's gonna stick out a little bit, which is perfectly fine for, a, for a, your backup magazine. That's perfectly fine. Run it with your stock magazine, or in this case, this is a, this is a Magpul magazine, but your stock magazine will fit in there flush just fine. Whereas if you get a nine millimeter, you convert it over to nine millimeter, which is a barrel. You don't even have to use the other spring. I do, but you don't have to. Then you have a 17 round magazine that sticks out or a 15 round somewhere over here. It's, I don't know where it's at. Your versatility goes way up. You have many, many more options with the 23 than if you just went out and got a nine. Because if you just have a nine, Okay, then I'm going to tell you, as far as I know, you can't put a 40 caliber or 40 Smith & Wesson barrel in it. You can't. Maybe you don't even want to do that. Maybe you're like, well, I don't want to do that. Okay, well, cool. Go get a 19. It's perfectly fine. But if you have the option, I would opt 99% of the time. I won't say always, but I would opt for the 23 given that, that versatility that you're going to get. So let me know what you all think. I know this is probably an extremely tenacious tension subject right some people super believe in a 40 some people super believe in a nine some people are like don't touch the gun well there's people that say don't touch a gun but they're like don't change the barrel don't change the magazines don't change the sights don't do anything because if you have to use that you're going to go to jail it's like okay well you can believe what you want to believe do what you want to do okay um but these are my opinions. These are my thoughts. I like the 23 for its versatility. Let me know what y'all think. I'm going to shut up now. And uh, yeah, there you go. Hope y'all. All right, guys, that wraps it up. I'm going to quit talking. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for subscribing if you did or liking the video or any of that kind of stuff. My Patreons, y'all know who you are. You guys are rock stars. Stinking amazing. You make this stuff a lot more possible um, than if I didn't have y'all out there. But I really do appreciate it. All right, y'all be good to be safe. And hopefully we'll catch y'all in the next video. So in short, if you made it through my whole video, basically what I'm trying to say is I like the Glock 23, 40 Smith & Wesson, because I can run it in 9, I can run it in 40, I can run it in 357 SIG, even though I haven't ever run it in 357 SIG, I can run it in those calibers, and I believe I have to put a micrometer on it, but it only makes sense. The 9mm conversion barrel is basically going to be a 9mm bull barrel, right? Because it's larger, that's why it's a conversion barrel. That's why you can't take a standard 9mm barrel and stick it in these things. 
you gotta have the conversion barrel. So you get a thicker bull barrel when you shoot nine millimeter. So in, in theory, which I disproved today, should be more accurate. Depending on the shooter, depending on the ammunition, all that kind of stuff, you get a bull barrel Glock 19. Basically is what you're getting with the 23. That's the short end of the story. That's what I should have said up front. But if you actually caught that, that means you watched it to the very end or you skipped all the way to the end and uh, you're one of those guys. So there you go. Appreciate it. Appreciate that. All right, y'all take care.